So Emma, down to the second video. In the first video, we talked a bit like about how you started with programming. Yeah. You know, you have two parents in in the programming uh, world, so it was to be a destiny that you tried to resist. To, I did try to resist, but still, you. you I got didn't there resist there. hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you enjoy it, right? I love it. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. Well, there's maybe one other job I would do, which is like to own a like a bookstore. That's nice. also a coffee shop. That also is a wine bar, but that doesn't seem as practical of a career at the moment. <laughs> so. But you end up in programming and yeah. you, you you enjoy it. There's something that um, often I guess maybe people forget about mm -hmm. is that when someone is a junior starting a job, like you, you had to go through that. Mm -hmm. told me, and you you went out of your study. You had that kind of huge confidence, and you went there, and you're like, wow, mm -hmm. I'm a bit ignorant about the, all these kind of things. Yeah. Um, and I think it happens more often than we, we think, but just, you know, we don't realize it because yeah. we get experience and we think like, oh, this is normal. Yeah. So what do you think? What, what how can we help people already starting? If you remember when you got into that state, when you started, what were the things that would have helped you a lot when mm -hmm. you started? There? I mean, you had you had confidence, which is great. Mm -hmm. But even for, with people that have less confidence than you, how, how can they deal with it? Yeah, I think mentorship is something that we don't talk enough about. Uh, and as an employer, providing your junior developers with a mentor is like invaluable, and I would encourage that. Um, I think for me, coming out of a degree program for computer science, um, I wasn't exposed to as much of the real world knowledge as I needed to be, versus had I come out of a boot camp, um, maybe that would have changed my perspective. But I feel like my degree, to a certain extent, was just about how to pass an interview. I mean, I, I had to learn data structures, algorithms, all these things, um, but nothing practical. I didn't learn how to build a website from start to finish full stack. I learned these things in isolation, which is really hard. Um, I didn't know about the fact that there was a whole online ecosystem of t ways to teach yourself. I didn't know about any online learning platforms. I didn't know Twitter was a, a really popular like tech ecosystem. Um, and if we can, educate our, our junior developers that there's a whole community online of people who are struggling just like you are and this is how they kind of overcame that i think that would that would make strides towards helping them that makes me think of uh, different things first you you kind of we, we didn't start in the same uh with the same background so mm -hmm. you ba basically went into computer science and then you started doing right um, you know programming in the industry mm -hmm. um well i had to do that path but actually i i spent six years in in armenia but I didn't study. Yeah. And I got into my diploma and then I started working. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get that. I, I, I programmed on myself while, while doing that, but yeah. I didn't follow exactly what, what the university was doing. And well, I found myself in the pro, in a, well, in the beginning, I knew a lot of things that the industry uh, needed, but then I would run into holes, mm -hmm. like something that I never heard of, like something very fundamental, like data structures, right. you said, algorithms. Uh, a lot of these kind of concepts. Mm -hmm. I, I had some idea, but I wasn't profound enough. And it was yeah. like, bug me each time. Mm -hmm. So that that kind of bit is also very important. You don't you might not see it in the beginning, but throughout your career, I guess mm -hmm. it's very important to have. Well, and that's one thing a computer science degree does really well is prepare you for those things. I have a lot of feelings about um, technical interviews, especially for front end developers and how yeah heavy they are with data structures and algorithms because it's not something that's taught. I don't feel like front-end development is taught as a viable career path in, in college. Like if you go to study yeah. programming, it's always back-end. There's rarely any web, at least where I was. I don't know if that's changed. Um, so even from you know day one at university, you're not being taught that web development is a viable career path. And maybe that's where the stigma of back-end being harder than front-end comes from. Um, but in terms mm. of data structures and algorithms, yeah, is it something that we should all be aware of? Absolutely. Is it something that as a junior developer working primarily on web technologies that I need to know how to balance a binary tree? No, I don't think so. So I have a lot of uh, feelings mm. about that. Right, right. But I guess <clears throat> front end can use a lot of structure and, absolutely. And, and and a lot of these kind of things. And you talked about interviews and that's also an, uh, an, um, one of the things that are a lot of very overwhelming for mm -hmm. people that are starting. It's first, it's an unknown process. Yeah. And then when you get into it, there's this kind of thing where you, you know, it, it may, they make you feel if you're looking online, it means you're cheating. Mm -hmm. And this way they, they test your current knowledge, not where you're capable of. Well, they don't your test potential. your knowledge, they test your memorization skills, yeah, memorization. which is ridiculous in my opinion. Yeah. If you have to memorize merge sort in JavaScript, 
how does that indicate how successful you'll be in your career? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. Do you actually understand these core concepts behind these algorithms? That's what's important. And I don't think memorization should play a part in that. I don't think either. Mm -hmm. And, you know, often what we do actually, you know, Often what we're trying to do in an interview, and you tell me if that's uh, something you've heard of or there, I could learn, like maybe you know better techniques for, for uh, hiring. Like uh, we, were, you know, we give it homework mm -hmm. and they, people can do whatever they want. Yeah. They can even talk to people, talk to yeah. their friends, whatever they want. But then at the end of the ha homework, they will present it and they will show that they understand mm -hmm. what they're talking about. Yeah, I love that capital. idea. Um, to get my current role, uh, log me and did give me a take home assessment, which was wonderful because there was no time pressure. I do not like those online time challenges. I do mm. terrible under pressure like that. Oh uh, yeah, um, my, my, I panic, <laughs> you know, you start like seeing time going and you, yeah. you need to do things well and you can't. Well, a lot of companies are using these like logic tests where it's like find the pattern in the series of numbers or in these shapes. And while I generally feel like I do OK on them, it like you walk out of there feeling like I don't like I don't I'm not cut out to be in this industry. IBM gave me one of those assessments. Uh, Spotify also did one of those. And it's just I don't understand how testing someone's logic with a, a four minute timed test is going to predict how successful I, 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 I remember one, one of these tests and it was for a, a company in, in fintech in London. You know, like find the pattern, this kind of thing. Like I was, yeah. I can find several ones. I don't know which one you want. You I'm know, like, there's several, yeah, I'm several like, patterns in there. I have a, a 25% chance of getting this right. I'm just going to click one. <laughs> um, and then they came back and they're like, you were in the top percentile. I'm like, I just clicked random ones. Like I didn't, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But I think the take home assessments are a, a great way to see how someone can can work with you because it forces people to be very um, explicit in their communication, very intentional with how they name their variables and their functions and create the architecture. Um, with those types of challenges, I really like doing the whole design process first and then walking through the entire process from start to finish. And I think that's a really great method if you have any level of design skills, um, you know, understanding information architecture and, um, you know, walking through wireframing process prior to actually sitting down and coding, um, that can really help you be successful in, in getting a, a job offer. Um, so I, I do think those are the best. The whiteboarding interviews are, are <laughs> I have a lot of issues with those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're very complicated. I mean, yeah. they put so, so much pressure that is not necessary. And I often I, I see it differently as an employer. Mm -hmm. uh, I see it more, you know, you, you need to explore that person to mm -hmm. understand who is, who is that person, you right. know, more than test them. It's not about testing them. Like you see, oh, they went for a new choice mm -hmm. that they don't know instead of sticking with what they know. Mm -hmm. So they're more, they like exploring new technology. You understand yeah. that about them. Or like you see, okay, they put more effort into the back end and you know, it's not their thing maybe to mm. kind of sp spend a lot of time on tiny things on the front. Right. So you understand these kind of things and you say, okay, does it fit what I'm, I'm looking for? Right. Can I take that potential and grow it? Right. And this is more the, the, the test that you're doing instead of like, oh, do you know that? Well, it's supposed to be about communication and how well you can communicate. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah. that's subjective and some interviewers are not on that page. Um, I went through a full interview process with a very well-known company and they're notorious for having hard interviews. And I made it through the entire um, on-site and everything. And um, there was technical difficulties with one of the interviews and they wanted me to redo it. And I'm sitting here thinking, I don't have time to travel back to the city to do another full day of interviews. Like I have to take off time from work. Um, if you don't know whether or not you wanna work with me already, um, you know, that's like, you, we should know, we should know by that point, whether or not someone is worth it. If you're investing that much time and money into it, um, you know, give people a chance, you know, maybe their ability to write asynchronous JavaScript functions is not, um, exactly where it should be. But at the same time, we just talked about memorizing things, right? In what universe would you ever have to program something without having access to the internet in a professional setting? Yeah, so. that makes sense. Like, it's like when, when exams, you didn't have the right to have a calculator and they're like, is it is it the right thing to use right. the brain as a calculator? Right. It's, it's not the most efficient calculator. Right. There, you, know? you can only rely on your tools so much. Like you have to understand these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I would um, uh, one one last uh, question about this kind of topic. Now, if you are um, like inter imagine you are this junior person again, mm -hmm. and you're interviewing uh, with a company. Mm -hmm. What are the things that the, the must you know, the, the thing that you have absolutely to do before going to that interview. Mm, I still consider myself junior. So this is like right on, on par. Um, I would say don't um, take for granted the cultural uh, interviews. I think they're very important. We focus so much on the technical skills and we forget about the other 
um, interviews that you might have. You might have one about architecture and how you would actually build a full scale application. Um, how do you, you know, distribute your your data across like all these servers? Like what kind of scaling do you need? for the app that you're building. These are all important things that we take for granted. And I think we focus so much on, you know, being able to call code merge sort um, mm. and, and understand big O notation. And while I do think you should focus on data structures and algorithms, unfortunately, um, don't take the communication for granted. And if you have something in your mind that you're thinking about while you're whiteboarding, say it out loud because they can't read your mind. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I, I agree. And also maybe a lot of things that you need to I try o always to to tell people that, and, and you know, it's a stressful situation, especially when I'm there, you know. But I, I write at them right right away. I tell them like, you are testing us mm -hmm. as well as we are, you know, right. try exploring you, right? right? You 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 should know. You should try to understand: is it the right company? Right. Will I be able to grow there? Right. Does, do they apply too much pressure? Right. Will they be able to work with me? And you should right. uh, maybe tell yourself that you are also choosing there. Well, right. And as a last note, I get a lot of questions from young engineers about how can I get a job at a Google, a Facebook, and IBM. And I'm I'm my advice to them is set your sights on something that you think you would be a good fit at because while having those big names on your resume opens a lot of doors um it might not be a good fit for you um it's really hard to stand out um and showcase your great work at these big companies you can feel lost um and just because yeah. a company isn't of that size does not mean they're not a great company to work for so i would just remember that you are also interviewing them yeah exactly yeah well thank you